We are live every Sunday on Public Access Television out of Austin, Texas, and broadcasts around the world as downloadable podcasts. The video portion is available at Google Video. For more information, you can go to our website, www.atheist-community.org. And we don't have to wait any longer. We have Haven. How are you doing? How's it going, man? You, you claim that you have proof of God. I have, uh, I have a proof, a logical proof okay. for God. But um, more important, the logical proof for uh, omnipresent. For what? Omnipresence. Okay. All right. Bring it. Okay. So, um, uh, it's going to be kind of rooted more in physics, but uh, as you approach the speed of light, everything kind of slows down. Uh, motion would would stop the light, uh, the refraction of whatever's moving at the speed of light. Uh, light wouldn't be able to bounce off a hidden observer, you know. Where the observer wouldn't be, you know, with what it is that's moving. But as you're approaching the speed of light, that object would actually stretch to mm -hmm. the observer. Does that make sense? Mm. Uh, sure. Mm, kind of. Well, mm, no, I'm afraid I'm not following this train here. Okay. okay. Well, um, you're so, okay, you, you're, you're talking about the law of special relativity, right? Like you're in a spaceship right. flying, you're getting close to the speed of light, and time right. for you inside your spaceship is slower than it is for the outside. Like, at the outside, the universe is racing along. Actually, time for the observer would proceed along normally. Yeah. But Whereas to what's the going outside on, observer, it it's would moving very to fast. Down. No, no, it's moving very, it's, it's moving much. Anyway. You are, yeah. You're it's in the like, spaceship, uh, and you're aging more slowly. If you're looking at uh, the a ray of light from a mirror mm -hmm. in the dark, the ray of light appears as a length, as opposed to you seeing each individual photon light up. You okay. know what I mean? You don't see specks, you see a stretched ray. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, but it, that's still made up of, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not like a solid beam or anything, right? It's an actual ray, and it's actually, it appears to be a ray to the observer. That, the, the array is the label that we put on it. Um, understanding the way light works right. and that and it moves, uh, it operates both as a particle and a wave. Um, Right. I, I, don't, I don't know how this is getting to proof of God or proof yeah, of Yeah, that's what I was, that was my and next oh, question. What I'm to and is the lines are full, so we need to roll it along. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the proof of omnipresent. Okay. Um, okay. And it's, it's kind of hard to explain, to, you know, in, in terms of the diagrams and a lot of, you know, background in physics and whatnot. Right. Okay. But well, um, yeah, then I guess we're kind of stuck, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, kind of okay. Stuck. Thanks. Well, anyway. well, how about, okay, well, with the proof of God, okay. I don't know if I'm going to be... Give, give us your quick proof of God, and then we're going to move on to other callers. Okay. Uh, quick proof of God. Uh, classical realism, the fact that the universe exists and can't exist because of itself, um, also reinforced by the law of conservation of energy. Something has to create the actual system outside of the system that is outside of the law. Uh, why? Uh, why couldn't, why the, couldn't universe, the universe... The universe can't can't create itself. Okay, where'd God come from? Uh, that's that's outside of our system and possibly unable to understand. Okay, uh, so so why couldn't the universe have always existed? And at the instant of the the Big Bang that formed the current stage of the universe, that's when the laws that we use to determine what the nature of reality are. That's when those uh, begin to apply. If we can't go the law of physics. Would have to, well. The only way, way that could happen is if the law of physics changed. Ah, see, and that's the problem. Right. That's the problem. Well, but the thing is, the even then, those laws of physics predating these laws would had to have been created by something. It's right. the idea of right. something and, has to start the, the uh, push. Okay. Yeah, and and that kind of argument means that no matter whether what you think about God, that he must have been created by somebody. If you're going to dismiss the fact that. Um, that, that we don't know what happened, for example, prior to the Planck time, where, where our understanding of physics break down and where the, the functional nature of the universe may have, in fact, changed. If you're going to dismiss all that and say that, well, whatever rules existed must have also had some kind of pre-existing rules and conditions, then you must also apply that to your God uh, excuse in order 
to remain consistent. Otherwise, it's no, just it, a matter it, of special pleading. Yeah. You're no. saying that there must have been something that doesn't conform to rules in order to create those rules. Yeah, I mean, because in, in, in the... It conform to the, law, the rules of this universe is, is what it is. What had created this universe doesn't apply to the rules of this universe, but and, and, it, it is the source for all the laws in this universe as well as the source for the reason. But you need, you need to demonstrate how you know that, how you, you, how, how you reach that conclusion. Well, whatever created this universe and its laws obviously had to belong to some sort of other universe or some other realm in which the laws of this one don't apply, so it had its own laws, etc., etc., etc. You're essentially trying to, you're essentially trying to solve a mystery by introducing another mystery, as you said earlier no, 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 on. No, because the existence of infinity in our universe, other universe, then there would be also an, a uh, an infinity existing in that. But you, ha you haven't... It, it, there isn't an infinity. Yeah. We're, we're done with that. We're moving on. We've got well, okay. full, full lines, but go ahead. Well, I, I was just going to say, you still have not structured your argument in such a way as to where this other realm and this other creative force or God or whatever you call it still does not have its own set of rules or, or does not have to obey the, uh, the, the rules that you apply to this universe, which is there had to be some sort of a creative entity there. You, you haven't... Uh, really allowed yourself to avoid the rather troubling problem of infinite regress. I mean, you, you, your God, whether he exists in or out of this universe and in whatever way you want to define that state of existence, still would have to have a cause for its existence in, in, in the form that your argument is currently taking. You haven't avoided uh, the real problem there. Yeah, yeah. And so. the, the whole thing of trying to solve a mystery with a mystery is we tend to explain things in terms of things that we understand. And so by saying that you have an explanation of the universe and that it is beyond understanding, you haven't done anything. Your explanation has no explanatory power. Yeah. And as soon as you make these special exemptions of, well, there's some, some intelligent transcendent being which exists outside of time and, and, and the universe as we understand it, and it has its own rules that we can't understand, and that's how this all got here, now you're just making a bold assertion. And what happens happens a lot of times is when, when Christians in particular go to assert um, that this transcendent being exists, they say he also transcends the, the rules of logic um, that we understand. Mm -hmm. And one of the things about that that I find really amusing is that the, the, uh, the core principle of logic can be expressed as A or not A. Something either is what it is or it isn't. It can't be both. It's an exclusionary principle. That's how we come to understand everything about the universe. And if you say that God then exists outside of the boundaries of logic, then you're saying that God can exist and not exist at the same time, which if we ignore all of these sometimes exists, sometimes not exist, sets up three possibilities. God exists. God does not exist. God both exists and not exists. And in two, or three out of the, two out of the three of those situations, God doesn't exist. Some. Mull that around for a while. Yeah. I mean, when you want to say something's outside of the realm of our understanding and outside of the realm of logic and reason, that's what you're doing. You yeah. no longer have any grounds to make any kind of positional claim. Yeah, it's, it's, the same, it's the same trap that a lot of creationists, for example, fall into. They uh, uh, declare that in order for anything in reality to exist, it has to obey a certain checklist of rules. And so in order to then explain the existence of everything that we are and everything that we see, they begin to invoke things that, oh, lucky for them, don't have to obey that checklist of rules. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of really cheating. You're, you're just really making stuff up at that point because, you know, if you're, you, you've simply given an answer that contradicts your premise. Yeah. So thanks for calling, though. Going to get on.